If you're looking for super cheap, fast, and reliable Madden 21 coins, look no further than my sponsor, MuttReserve.com. They're super awesome to work with, and their coins are currently discounted a ton. Make sure to take advantage and use code Poodle at checkout for an additional 15% off your order. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video guide. Today, I'm going over the most overrated players in Madden 21 right now, guys. Now, in terms of overrated, like I always tell you guys, don't freak out. These players aren't bad. I just think that their price point doesn't match their skill. Or that their hype around them just doesn't match what they actually do or their stats. But you guys should know this by now if you've been around the channel long enough. So we're gonna get into this in just a second. But for today's Poodle Squad shout out, guys, you guys are gonna know the deal. Like the video, comment down below Poodle Squad, and of course, turn on that notification bell. Which is all those things you are entered to be shouted out. And for today's shout out, we got Buffalo Boy. Shout out to you, man, for being a part of the Poodle Squad. I saw the comment. Thank you, appreciate it, man. And again, if you want a chance to shout out, you guys heard the deal. Now, in terms of coins, if you guys need coins, head over to Mutt Reserve down below. Use code Poodle for an additional 15% off your order. Take advantage. Pick up some coins, guys. If you guys need, you can also buy training and players on there as well. So make sure to take advantage. We do have the LTDs today that you guys should have seen already. So if you guys want any of those, you guys know the deal. But let's head on over to the auction block and show you guys the most overrated players. Now, starting with the first one. Again, again, I'm looking at price. I'm looking at skill. I'm looking at overall and hype. It kind of combines everything here. So for the first guy on the list, we got Dan Marino. Now, Dan Marino coming in around 150K. I still think that's a lot for him because I just don't think Dan Marino is all that great. Now, you might be asking why. First off, for Dan Marino to become a passer, which is sad, right? So you get a guy like Dan Marino who's a pure passer. For him to become a good passer, you have to power him up and chem him all the way. Now, why is that? Because otherwise, he's no better than Mahomes or Vic or any of the other guys because he's only in the 80th passing threshold. So for Dan Marino to be a good passer, first off, you have to power him up which still he still falls short of short and medium then you gotta put go deep on him to get his deep accuracy up so now you don't have the short threshold or the medium threshold or the play action threshold all you get is the deep accuracy threshold so essentially you're michael vick except michael vick is a better throw power so what, what i'm seeing here is that michael vick is a better thrower than dan marino right per se because they both don't hit 90 on medium or short i believe and they both hit deep accuracy except michael vick has a way stronger arm so that's what i'm getting from that now moving on when you're actually playing with dan marino yeah i don't believe that you need to scramble to be able to win a game but i do believe you need to be able to create you know uh create a play so there's times when let's say you have an out route going and, and, and lauren taylor comes screaming in even the little bit of being able to just run three steps to the right and then throw and create a little bit of like just an extra second to let the tight end or the wide receiver separate is huge and dan marino can't do that quite literally if someone's coming at him you have until that guy is going to hit him to throw the ball while with guys like even Mahomes, who only has a 76 speed or whatever, you can still hold LT, get an extra three steps, and sidearm it from the side like that. Like, it's very easy. And that's why I feel like Dan Marino just can't make a play. And if you really look at his stats closely, he's not all that great. Now, moving on from him, guys, the next on the list is Derek Brooks. Now, the thing with Derek Brooks is that he has his use. I just feel like when you use him the way he's supposed to be used, you're pretty much telling people that, like, you don't plan to get up on the line and stop him. You're just going you're, you're to play it safe all game. So... With Derek Brooks, what can he do? He gets to 90 zone, but again, get him to 90 zone, you gotta power him up and come up all the way to lockdown or get locked down all the way up, but that's also very costly as well. And then he gets to 90 zone with an 84 speed or 85 speed. Now, because the NFL 50 players or the 50 players are super expensive to power up, no one's really doing it. You have to imagine him that you're only gonna keep him probably base, which is what most people are doing here. And at that point, he just barely hits the zone threshold, the 91. And even if he hits that, guys, again, what does it say when you come out and you don't put your outside line? Your outside linebacker can't block shed and can't pass rush. So pretty much, if they run on you, they're running all day on you. If you get lucky in their passers, they're still going to run occasionally on you. And that's the issue with guys, Derek Brooks. When you put a whole team of all zone guys out there, you're pretty much saying, like, it's just like a bend don't break defense. Like, you plan to just sit there and cover up in a pass step. But if they just want to run the ball, they can literally destroy you. You, get, you need a good outside linebacker that can either A, pass rush, or be, be able to block shed. So at least if they do run the ball, he can at least do a stop. Like if, if, if Derek Brooks has like an 85 or 86 block shed, he's going to be one of the best outside linebackers in the game, despite him being kind of slow. He would be way better because then that says, oh, you could play zone and you can stop the run. You just can't pass rush, but that's fine. I'll, I'll change my scheme. I'll put a left end on, I'll put a left end and the right end on there. And suddenly I don't need my Derek, I don't need Derek Brooks pass rushing. So I got an extra cornerback sort of, you know, out there that can play a lot of zone and also stop the run. It's, it's a great it's great but he can't stop the run which really hurts him moving on from the next one we got now this guy this one's tough i'm a big fan of this guy i was a giant I'm a, oh i am a giants fan so odell beckham jr i know he plays good he does play good but when you really compare well because it's odell when you play with odell i feel like you get the sense of like wow i'm playing with odell but if you really look at his stats closely right powered up and chemmed up he has 92 speed which is great 
I'll give him that. The speed's great. But what is it? What's the difference between him and like a Tyree Kill or Calico, right? Now, my issue with him is going to be that catching. Like that, that's my issue. The issue with Odell, and it's always been an issue with Odell Madden. You buy Odell and you pay that top, like top tier receiver price, but you don't always get that production. What do you get out of him? You get big plays, big breakaways, but you can't consistently throw a contested slant to him, he'll drop them. You can't consistently throw a contested into him, he will drop them. You can't consistently throw a contested streak to him, he'll drop them. He doesn't have great catching traffic, he doesn't have great catching in general. So typically, the only way something happens is if he makes some crazy play or he gets loose. Now, yes, they did give him top tier speed on this car, which they typically keep him like one or two below that, which is great. But on the route running terms, he gets short. And he'll get the deep, but he does not get the medium. Now, medium for me on an Odell card is pretty, is super important. I feel like Odell's like, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a deep hitter, of course, but a mid range and a short hitter as well. So, had he gotten the mid range as well, I think he would have been perfectly rated for what he is. And his catching so low. Like, guys, quite literally, he's Tyree Kill. Obviously, he's better. But if you're doing deep posts and deep crossers, what's the difference? So, if you look at them, right? Of course, Odell gets the plus one speed, which I'm going to give it to him for right now, but Calico as well gets right there. And the thing with, if you compare them, is they both have bad catching. Now, the difference really here is going to be that short running that Odell gets that Tyreek doesn't have. So, you can use Odell on a more on a more wide spectrum, I'll give him that. And I really like this Odell, I do. But I know we're, we're, we're not too far away from a receiver that can quite literally do everything, like a Randy Moss or like a Calvin or something. So, I'm not going to go all in on Odell just yet. I know he's not going to get many upgrades this year. Probably. He got a team of the week, which probably means he's not getting most feared. And typically, he has gotten to Thanksgiving once before, but he probably won't get it this year. So, we may not see him again until Christmas. I'm not going to go all in because he's short of an everything receiver without that mid-range. And that's what I want to look for my receivers. Like, a, probably Randy Moss. Or, like I said, a Calvin. Or someone along those ranges. So, I'm going to be waiting on that. But again, Odell's not bad. By no means is he bad. I just think he's slightly overrated because he is Odell. I mean, the speed's great. Again, the fact that they gave him that speed is why it's tough to put him here. But at the same time, 250k. You got to power him up. You end up putting like 350k into him. And at the end of the day, he can't mid-range run. So it's going to be short and deep. Short and deep. And I feel like you have the deep guy like Calico. Who can quite literally do just about everything. And real quick, I do want to show you Calico to give you guys a comparison. Uh, just real quick. Before we get to the next guy on this list here. Calico. He's amazing. He's 6'4", so he's way taller. He gets the catch and traffic threshold. He can get the medium route running threshold if you'd like. Not too sure, but honestly, I care more about the medium and deep. And then he gets the spec, catch and traffic, and the same speed. So he's a better version of Odell. The only thing he doesn't get is a short. Moving on, Tony Gonzalez is next on this list. Now, Tony Gonzalez, the basement isn't horrible. The Redux, again, though, 235k is definitely a little too expensive. Here's my issue. 84 speed. It's not game breaking. Like, I, like I've been saying, guys, I've had Tony Gonzalez. I've had, I have Jimmy Graham. At the end of the day, my Jonah Smith plays pretty well. The thing with tight ends is, when I'm going to throw in the end zone, right? Or I'm, I'm, I'm throwing contested. I'm probably not looking for my tight end. I'm probably looking for my top tier wide receivers. Those are the guys that I probably trust to make the big play regardless, right? So when do I look for tight ends? When they get naked. When I see a gap in coverage and I hot route them. Those are the times. And typically, what dominates those situations? For me, it's speed, right? Speed and route running, potentially. Now, personally, I've never quite seen the use for a short route running on a tight end except for, like, slants. Typically, my favorite thing is medium route running. Hands down for tight ends. Medium route running. Tony Gonzalez is not at the threshold. Now, the issue with him, such as guys like Odell, is that people don't typically run the chemistry on the team that gets them medium route running threshold. So you're not going to get that regardless. So now you end up with a guy who's a great catcher, a great slant guy, pretty slow, and can't run medium routes. So at the end of the day, what's the difference between him and Joe New Smith out in the field, right? Because I don't throw contests to my tight end. It's very rare. Now, there are instances where you do, and I understand that. But then, let's find a better better tight end. I just don't think Tony Gonzalez is worth it. I think that he's a little overrated. And coming for the next guy, who falls in a similar category, is going to be Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham has a similar issue. He does not hit the medium route running threshold. So again, why is he being so much more priced than Tony? I guess for the redux, he's being priced the same. But 84 speed again, not game breaking speed. Like you will, like I have Jonah Smith, I have both, and Jonah Smith makes plays with just his speed. Now the difference is when I have Jimmy Graham, I expect him to make plays and touchdowns. When I have Jonah Smith, you know, 120 yard gain or 130 yard game, gain a game, and I'm like, you did good. Jimmy Graham, I want, I want to be carrying an offense, and I, I just don't think he's that great. First off, that catching. He's so slow most of the time. The only time I see it in use is if I have to throw a contested, which is kind of annoying. And that short route running, I don't I don't really throw him short that much because I mean I don't throw tight end short anyways. Because if I throw a tight end short, the play's typically ending right there. Or I'm throwing wide open versus a wide receiver. 
who quite literally can take it to the house in the short range. But beyond that, he's very identical there, and I think he's very expensive for his price. I do want to sell him. I just haven't yet because I'm waiting for a new tight end. And Darren Waller is, of course, coming. Who There you go. Now, that's a tight end. He gets the speed and the route running. It's unbelievable. That card's going to be crazy expensive and probably break the game, quite honestly. And for the final card, now, this guy... His base legend is fine. His base legend, go ahead and buy it. I completely stand by it. But if you guys are buying this card, you're kind of you're kind of crazy. Now, this card here is going to be limited time, Kevin Maway or Mawai, however you say it. Now, 400, almost half a million coins. And if you end up buying it and they're trying to resell it and the reduction you lose, you pretty much lost half a million coins. You end up going for half a million coins here for a center. Now, don't get me wrong. He's threshold everywhere. But look at it. His pass blocking is threshold by one. His pass block power is off by three. And his pass block footwork or finesse already is off threshold regardless. And then run blocking. His base card is a run blocking threshold guy regardless. And his uh his other one's gonna be short of pass blocking on one of them. The other one was already short. So typically, so for an extra 250k, depending on after reduction, if you end up going to start, I know you're gonna run selling at a point. For an extra 50 to 150k, whatever it is, sorry, 150k to 200k. You're going to end up looking like you don't need it. Now, again, you could also power them up. And with the price of training right now and the price of everything, I think it's well worth saving the 200, 250K, 150K, whatever it ends up being for it. Now, it's also a center. So despite everything, despite even if there was a threshold gap, it's a center. Now, yes, I think centers are super important, but I, I would never pay almost half a million. Like Vic and Dion are it's like literally like if you look right here, guys, it's Kevin Mawai, Vic Dion, right? Kevin Mawai means you're green, Vic Dion. So... Again, even Vic's a little up in price right now. He was in the 400k range as well. I will pay for Vic and Dion as my duo than a Kevin Mo White, Mean Joe Green. It's like just night and day there in terms of what their effectiveness is going to be. Now, I do love a good center, but why not pick up his cheaper counterpart that's like 200k that quite literally will do the same thing. And you can always power up if you want to get in. If you powered up the same card and just give you guys a look real quick, almost positive. It's about a 200k difference. I will search my center here for you guys so you can get a good look real quick before we end this video. And let's see, we got Kevin Moway coming at 222. So, 200k, 200k, and it's the same card. You know, all you gotta do is power it up, and the power up's not just go play the solo. And for the power up, of course, here you go. You will get all the running thresholds. You will get a pass blocking finesse threshold. And I believe if you do zone run, you may, or zone run, or like go deep or something, you may get that pass block threshold as well. So maybe he's not a zone run guy. Maybe he's more of a go deep kind of guy, if that is the case. But guys, better for the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you wanna be part of the Poodle Squad, like the video. Comment down below Poodle Squad and turn on that noti bell as per always. And guys, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you need coins, head enough to my reserve down below. Use code Poodle. Take advantage of all the discounted coins, players, and training. And the new LTDs in there as well. Guys, that's about it. I'm out. Peace.